Despite the undeniable success of the video gaming industry and the large fan base video games have cultivated over the last 30 years, video games themselves still seem to be a highly stigmatized form of art. When most people think of video games, this is probably what comes to mind. Most people view video games as something that is mindless and shallow, a way for kids to get their kicks shooting at digital monsters and terrorists. However, video games can be much more than that. They have just as much potential as any other form of art for great storytelling. And I know what you're thinking, huh, what type of shallow excuse for a story inhabits a video game? What, something like Die Hard? Yet, there are many video games that focus on delivering strong and engaging narratives, much like film. And this isn't rare either. Many of the most popular games in the world are games that focus on story and have cultivated a large fan base because of it. Even some games that focus mostly on their gameplay develop a strong narrative and lore in order to incorporate a more believable world in the experience. To prove the point that video games have just as much potential to make a great story as any other form of art, I'm going to compare the critically acclaimed game Undertale by Toby Fox to the critically acclaimed graphic novel Persepolis by Marjan Satrapi. But first off, what is Undertale? Undertale is an RPG developed by Toby Fox. The story follows a child who falls into a mountain discovering a world of monsters hidden beneath. There, they must survive and coexist with this new world. And, as Toby Fox stated on the Kickstarter page, it is an RPG where no one has to get hurt. In most games, especially RPGs, the player encounters enemies and has to fight them. However, in Undertale, there is an option to talk your way out of conflicts, resulting in a way to play the game peacefully. Now onto my first point, connecting Marjan Satrapi's Persepolis and Toby Fox's Undertale. <coughs> The first point is, the two main characters kind of look alike. However, all jokes aside, my first real point is that the two texts use comedy in very similar ways. While the story of Persepolis takes place in a very violent and unsettling atmosphere, there are many whimsical and comedic moments since the main character is a growing child. However, the whimsical and happy moments of the novel are juxtaposed by the many realistic and gritty depictions of war and violence from the two oppressive regimes. This contrast is used to emphasize how dark and depressing these times were to live through. Undertale also uses this motif. Comedy is often used throughout the game to mask the true darkness surrounding the player and the world. This next section highlights what I'm saying perfectly. The game often shifts its tone like this, from going from cute, whimsical, and fun, to dark, horrifying, and sometimes just straight up strange. Not to mention, Undertale, much like Persepolis, is extremely dark. Behind its whimsical and fun facade lies a story about death and genocide, often having children as the victims. In summary, both stories use comedy and silliness to juxtapose and cover up the oppression and darkness haunting the worlds the narratives take place in. Speaking of the worlds they're in, another similarity between the two stories is that they both chronicle the lives of an oppressed group of people. In Persepolis, Marjan and the Satrapi family have to go through two oppressive regimes. The first, helmed by the Shah, that was a puppet government of the West, and the second, an Islamic revolution that imposes extremist values over the entire country. 
However, on the other hand, in Undertale, the child protagonist falls into deep into the mountain to discover the underground, a land inhabited by creatures called monsters. Despite their sometimes crude and horrifying appearances, they are just as kind and sentient as any other human. However, after an ancient war in which the humans sealed them into the mountain, they are discriminated against and are unable to walk freely among the world, despite the many desires to do so. This is a similar situation that the Iranians find themselves in in Marjan Satrapi's Persepolis. Despite how ridiculous and fantastical Undertale's version of the story seems compared to Marjan Satrapi's Persepolis, the same hopelessness and fear that haunts the characters in Persepolis resides within the fun and whimsical characters of Undertale. At least, you start to see it after you play the game for a while. In transcending the realms of simple narrative motifs and setting, both of the stories share a very similar theme, the theme of forgiveness. In Persepolis, Marjan is taught by her family that she must forgive despite the many atrocities that she faces. In one instance, around page 47, she believes that her and her friends should go beat up a child since his father killed communists during the Shah's revolution. However, her mother intervenes, explaining that she should not try to hurt the child and should rather forgive him despite his misunderstandings and his father's evil deeds. Undertale also shares this theme of forgiveness. In every instance in which an enemy is encountered, the player is given the choice to either kill or spare them, killing them obviously by attacking them or sparing them by talking to them and trying to calm them down. Throughout the game, there are many endings. However, the happiest and most, and most bright ending comes from the pacifist run, in which the player kills no enemies and instead uses peace and forgiveness as, as their tool of dealing with situations. <clears throat> Despite there being multiple endings, one could argue that the game doesn't emphasize forgiveness. Once looking at the other endings, it is quite clear that the pacifist ending is the happiest and most desirable comparably to the others, which some end in depressing and in sometimes horrifying fates. Despite the many surface level differences, Undertale and Persepolis truly are stories of the same kin. The fact that a video game can employ many elements of a world-renowned graphic novel studied in schools all over America shows that video games do in fact have the potential to contain meaningful stories. While I do love Undertale and think it has a great narrative, Undertale is just one of hundreds of great games just waiting to share their writing and stories they have within them. So I hope that if you came into this video thinking that video games are shallow and pointless, that you will have more of an open mind towards the medium in the future. Thank you.